Here we are, episode 23, breaking down the basics. It's the long form. We're going to go through a couple examples here from the short form that we talked about earlier. All right, and we're looking at engineered uh, in this episode. So number one, we're, we're still focusing on engineered. Number one, we're looking at alarm. So this is just showing a documentation of looking at an alarm and looking at high level. How will we document in the PHA, right? So we put the alarm tag. It's going to be high level in a vessel. And then we have an operator response. This is a manual response. Uh, it's not an automated response, okay? So we even listed what the emergency response plan was, uh, what's the operator procedure that they're going to do. So as I mentioned in the short form, you really want to make sure you have a documented response to this, even if it's pretty simple, even if it's straightforward, or maybe it's not straightforward, and that's the reason you don't have a uh, procedure for it. You want to make sure you mention that uh, in the safeguard to be able to use the safeguard. Secondarily, we're looking at SIL devices, you can see here in the chart that's coming up on the screen, so levels uh, one all the way up through four, which four, not seen a ton of four, but some of you out there maybe have still fours. Um, and you can see there's an association there of a probability of failure on demand with the device and a risk reduction factor that you're looking at in your PHA or your LOPA. Okay, um, and so those uh, kind of go into the methodology and the thinking of what SIL rating actually means. It's telling you how reliable it is, and there's some factors and how you make it more reliable based on uh, inspection, testing, how you design it. Um, all this with the SIL, what's important is you need to have this in a calculation form, right, to be able to take it. But all this tells you the reliability of the SIL device. It doesn't necessarily tell you, uh, so it says the device is going to work, doesn't necessarily tell you is this going to fix the problem, okay? So that's another thing that you, you still need to focus and make sure that the action that it's taking is going to fix a scenario that you're looking at in the PHA to be able to take this device um, as a credit in the PHA, okay? Lastly, talking about PM programs, I know we said this is engineered, what I'm going to show you is some pictures are going to come across, uh, and it's a mechanical device. It's not a, it's not an engineer, but it's it's getting the point across. All safeguards need to be part of PM, um, and, and instrumentation is included there. But you can see first picture, nice, clean, white, brand new, installed. Right, second picture, some degradation. You're looking at some paint chipping those, and the third picture, you've got an actual failure. Uh, of a device completely rusted out, plugged, not useful, right? So that's showing a mechanical device, as I mentioned, but in our instrumentation and those things that we're looking at, same thing can happen, right? You've seen systems go out there, uh, everything's paint's worn off of it, wires are frayed. Um, those systems are not going to obviously work in the way you intended them to be. So that's why it's important to say, hey, is this part of the pre PM program? Is this being looked at? Uh, because this is great if we've designed a great safeguard, but we need that safeguard to work uh, in the scenario of concern uh, to help us mitigate that risk. All right. So a couple examples there to show you a little more in depth again on engineering safeguards to using your PHA. As always, more long form content on our YouTube channel and our website. Bear process safety, you know, keeping you safe.